About a week ago, I posted some material on replacing a PID controller with an LSTM network. I had a few requests to also do the MPC case where you have a model predictive controller and you want to be able to emulate that with an LSTM network. You can see some of the response here from a variety of industry and also academia and locations. So we're going to go into that in a little bit more detail with um, this LSTM network to see how well it does with model predictive control. So we have um, just a little bit more information about this. We're going to start off with the single input, single output model predictive control. And then a next case study, we'll work on the MIMO model predictive control. And that's going to be posted to the dynamic optimization course. So just go to apmonitor.com slash DO. And then if you go down to the LSTM networks under machine learning, at the very bottom, you'll see the source code for the MIMO MPC case study. But we're going to jump back into just the single input, single output case study with model predictive control, very analogous to the proportional, or sorry, PID, proportional integral and derivative controller. So if you come down here to the bottom, there's LSTM emulates CISO or single input, single output MPC. And so we're going to jump into this one. You can also s use this in Google Colab. We do have this temperature control lab right here. And you can optionally run it with the hardware. Or if you want to use the digital twin, then just anywhere that you see TC lab in the code, you can replace that with TC lab model. Or there's a way to even speed it up even further that I'll show you. So you don't have to have the physical device. We're going to run through this um, and hopefully get to some results that look a little bit um, like this, where we can have the LSTM or the model predictive controller that have fairly similar responses. So we want to see if we can learn from the MPC and this has implications in industrial control as well. Sometimes you have online optimizers that you may not know if they're going to converge or not. Well, LSTM is a simple lookup for the uh, testing or when you deploy it online. And you can do the offline training and then deploy it to an architecture like a distributed control system or a programmable logic controller and be able to run the LSTM instead of having to deploy optimizers. The other thing that allows you to do, let's say you have a commercial MPC solution, you could potentially train and learn from that MPC and then um, you know, potentially convert over to LSTM and that might save license fees or there might be other considerations for deploying this on um, in an industrial control process. Now, the one thing you have to watch out for is that um, you know if you're outside of the training region, these uh, recurrent neural networks and others they don't do as well after you're outside of the training region. So you just have to put in some protections in there uh, if you are outside of that training region. Okay, so let's jump into this code right here. If you want to get the code and follow along. Just come here to GitHub, go to raw, save link as, and then you can save it to somewhere where you can open this up. For this preview, we're going to go with the Jupyter Lab notebook in Colab. And we're going to change the runtime to a GPU, and then go ahead and save that, and then we can just click run all. Now, one of the things that you'll notice by running in this um, Colab is that there are going to be two packages that are not installed by default. One is TC Lab and the other one is Gecko. So we're just going to insert a code cell and then from here pip install both TC Lab and Gecko and run that. It only needs to be run once and you don't need to restart the kernel. So when you work on a Jupyter Notebook in your own, your own desktop, you need to restart the kernel, but you can just comment that out and click run all again. So we're going to import the packages, some of the standard ones. And, uh, and then if you have TC Lab hardware, change that to true. 
Uh, here is the simulated version where he did 100 times speed up. Uh, you can see the model fit. And uh, then I'm going to show as well, this one is with the TC Lab. So I actually uh, collected that over those samples. Here's the MPC controller and the MPC function. And then we're going to generate the data. This is going to be 90 minutes worth of data. There are the set points that we're going to give it between uh, about 50 to 30 to 70. Now here is the TC Lab training. I'm going to speed this up a bit just so we don't have to wait you know, the full amount of time. You'll see with the emulated one, even though we have 100 times speed up for the emulated TC Lab, it still takes a while to do all of these MPC calculations. So every time step, it's doing these calculations and then just recording the first Q value that's there. And you can see the prediction horizon just with that uh, animation there. This is with TC Lab uh, data. And then once it's done, it's going to get up to about uh, 5,400 on the time. Um, and then once it's done, we're going to use that data to then train the LSTM. So it's almost done. This is back to almost real time. You can see the response. And then I'm also going to show it with the hardware. Uh, so very similar, different set points. Every time you go through it, it's going to generate different set points. So your results are going to be different from mine. Here are the select K best features as set point and error, the most important ones. So we're going to select those. And then we're going to train the neural network, in this case, the um, this Keras uh, current neural network as an LSTM. And I'll speed it up a little bit here as well. You can see the loss and then the validation as well. So good monotonic decrease in those values. You can also see this is um, you know, part of the training data where you can see the performance of the LSTM and also the MPC. Let's generate some new set points though that weren't used for training at all. This is gonna be 45 minute test and we're gonna speed it up just with the simulator. We have um, that function there, the LSTM function that converts the measured temperatures into the Q values. And I'll speed this one up as well going to go for simulated 45 minutes and then show the response both with the digital twin that one's going to be on the left and then um, I'll put over the top of it um, where you're going to see the measured values with the TC lab hardware so in each of these cases we're going to see very similar results between the two as um, okay uh, between the simulated and also the, the physical hardware. All right, I'll slow it back down and TC Lab successfully disconnected. Here are the results from the emulated TC Lab, the digital twin. You can see that the LSTM and the MPC are very close to each other. And then here's with the physical hardware. So both of those are very, are very similar. Now we're going to run the controller again another 45 minutes uh, testing just with the LSTM. So before it was with the uh, uh, MPC providing the control commands. Now it's just with the LSTM and we'll compare uh, the results of the two. So there you can see the LSTM and uh, so that one uh, did really well um, at controlling. So now we're going to export into a pickle file and with our model file. Now that we have the pickle file with the model name, the scaling, and the window, and then also the model file with all of the parameter weights of the LSTM network, we're going to uh, develop the deployment solution. And so this is going to be, first of all, importing the TC lab. We'll import time. We'll import NumPy as well and matplotlib and this pickle uh, to be able to unpickle the file and read it. We'll also from Keras models will import load model and then PID is going to be one second. MPC is going to be two seconds for this cycle time. That's just how it was trained to give it sufficient time to calculate. And then if you have the TC lab hardware, just switch that to true and I'll run both of these. We'll have the H5 file, the scaling for the X values and the Y values. The X's are the features, the Y are the output labels, which is the Q. And then we also have the window. 
and we'll unpickle by loading that and just load in the lstmcontrol.pkl and we'll read binary. Then we also have the model. This is going to be the H5 file and we'll load that into the model that's going to be our LSTM network. If you have the TC Lab hardware, then go ahead and connect with mlab equals TC Lab dot TC Lab. We're going to load just that function and we'll connect later. Else, we'll use a speed up here of about 10 times and we'll just say connected equals false. We'll define our LSTM function now. And this one requires the measured values and then also the set point. And we'll use a window of 15 looking backward. We'll calculate the error. And then we'll need to format the data. We'll stack these two together with the set point and the error. And then we'll transform it with our scaling. We'll reshape these. And then we also need to have the predicted uh, Q value. This is where the prediction takes place. We fed in the XS values and then out comes the prediction. And we're going to inverse transform this as well. And then we'll also ensure that Q1C is between 0 and 100. And then we'll return Q1C. So this function is the one where we input the T1 and the T1 set point, And then it returns the heater value. We're going to just simulate this now for 300 seconds. If you have the emulator or if you have the physical hardware, then it's going to use the actual device. And we'll go divide by the cycle time. So it would be 150 if you have the MPC. And I'm just going to create some empty storage. I'll connect to the TC lab right here. I'll have a counter I and then uh, for T in TC lab clock. This is going to help us synchronize the clock uh, if we have a an emulator it's going to help us uh, do this sped up version so every time you go through this loop it's like you've gone through one or two seconds depending on PID or MPC here's my final time and then I also have my cycle time as a second argument for that we'll record the time by appending the T value we'll read the temperature by appending lab.t1 and then this is going to be the LSTM control. If I have um, I is greater than the window I needed, which is 15, then I'm just going to say I'm going to take the last 15 values. Else, we need to um, concatenate. We need to put two things together. So I'm going to insert something, which is going to be the number of ones equal to what I'm missing times by the initial temperature. So I'm just going to, before I reach 15, I'm just going to use that initial temperature for the ones that I'm missing. And then I'll put that insert in here, followed by the remaining ones that I have. Okay, now my set point is going to be 50 times the number uh, 15, which is going to be the window size. Okay, and then I'm going to append my Q value. So this is where I do the calculation with the LSTM. And then I implement that Q value back into the TC lab. Now I'm going to just print out the header every 50 cycles. And then I'll print out just the measurements every five cycles and increment that counter I. Then I'll close the lab. Now I'm going to create the figure. And this is going to be the time in minutes. I'll create a figure of a little bit bigger size, 10 by 6 and then create my first subplot and this is going to be the set point and then I'm going to have uh, this label T1 set point here's my temperature and then I'm going to give it a Y label and a legend Then my second subplot is going to be the Q values and I'll just label that Q1 and this is going to be my heater and that's going to be time in minutes and there I finished this okay so now what I want to do is just go ahead and save it. Okay, I'm going to switch that to zero right here. Okay, it's saved. And now I want to run it. Um, you, know, you can run it from a command prompt or from Jupyter Notebook or any other environment. So I'm just going to change to the desktop. And I'll run it with Python. And this is called deploy.py. Okay, so this is the simulated TC lab. 
and there you can see that it's running it's running at about 10 times faster than real time and there you can see the plot of the expected response now what we'll do is we'll switch this over to use the physical hardware okay I'm going to switch this to true and now it's going to use the actual TC lab hardware so I'll go ahead and just uh, run this this one's going to take just a little bit longer so I'll speed it up here as it's calculating and running this one is going to be real time so it's going to take a full five minutes to complete this but you can see that the initial temperature is 22.67 the heater went on to hundred percent and the set point is equal to 50 we're going to speed this up and it'll go for five minutes this was real time but I've just sped up the video in the end it produces a chart that has some offset one of the things to note is that we trained it on the emulated device, but then tested it on the physical hardware. So there's some model mismatch that might need an integrator. Thanks for joining for this case study on how to emulate a model predictive controller. In this case, a single input, single output controller. We're using an LSTM network to replace it. One of the next steps in this is to use a multiple input, multiple output, or two by two controller that we'll also test with the TC lab as uh, we mentioned earlier. So thanks for joining and uh, look forward to your comments or questions or suggestions as well.